one of the main selling points for Svelte is its simplicity. Building apps in Svelte feels like building them in plain HTML and JavaScript, so this framework might be the best option for pragmatic developers who just want to get shit done. To see this in action, let's create a basic to-do app and review 13 concepts you should know when working with Svelte. Just like in any other modern framework, Svelte apps are components or collections of components which keep track of state, aka data, and automatically update the DOM when the data is changed by various user or server events. Svelte components follow the single file structure where the JavaScript logic, the HTML template, and the CSS rules are all stored under the same file. These files are then compiled into the optimized JavaScript bundles executed by the browsers. Starting with Svelte 5, we can use runes to declare reactive state in our components. These are special functions which use signals under the hood to keep track of an internal value and notify a list of subscribers whenever that value changes. Reactivity applies for both primitives and arrays or objects. What's more interesting, though, is that we can derive this state in a declarative manner. You can use the derived function for simple expressions and the derived by if you need to create more complex derivations. While derived functions should be free of side effects, you can use the effect rune to execute code that has implications outside the reactivity context. In our example, we might want to populate the task list with values already stored on the server. The onMount lifecycle hook will run once after the component is rendered in the DOM and it is a good place to initialize your app state. Moving to the template section, we can render data in the DOM using curly braces and use the each block to iterate over lists of elements. As a good practice, we'll associate a unique ID with each DOM entry so that the framework can efficiently keep the DOM in sync. We'll use one-way data binding to capture the user input into the text value and the on-click event listener to save new entries in our task list. What you might not realize is that you can simply push your new task into the list and the framework will take care of all the derived values, effect functions and DOM updates for you. We might consider adding more task-related functionality, so, since the task line might grow in complexity, it might be a good idea to extract this code in a separate child component. We can then pass down the task object and any other needed functionality as properties. By the way, you are watching the snippet, the fast-paced no BS series where we are reading code to get better at writing code. In the new task line file component, we'll use the properties hook to retrieve the information and render that in the DOM. Note that Svelte offers native TypeScript support, but you have to specify it in your script tag. And, finally, for convenience reasons, we can use two-way data binding to capture the change of the task done state. If you like this fast-paced style but want a deeper dive into front-end concepts, take a look at my YesJS course or check out one of my other videos. Until next time, thank you for watching.